cows and the eggnog's gone. Hallelujah, everybody say cheese. Merry Christmas from the family. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you are new here. So, we are getting really close to Christmas. I can't wait. There's like two weeks or something. I don't know. Um, so, today is a little bit less busy of a day than yesterday, which was absolutely crazy if you watched that vlog, which you probably should. So, today I thought I would make a bit more of a relaxing video and just kind of sit down, wrap some presents and talk to you about some of my plans for the future and kind of what's going on right now with barrel racing and, and everything like that. Like I've been getting questions. I got one question from a very loyal subscriber asking, well, if I plan to go pro one day, so that's like in the future, but I have gotten two other questions about when my next barrel race will be. Also, don't mind my hair. I just had a shower, so it is wet. But I got questions asking when my next bell race will be. So I'm just gonna start wrapping some presents and talk about that. So currently right now, my thing is I didn't really expect to be here. So I actually didn't even buy a membership. Like, so where I live, the 2021 season for my local barrel racing jackpot association, it actually starts like, the 2021 season actually already started in, like, July or August or something, which is kind of weird, I guess. Kind of weird. But, so, I never bought a membership, and yeah, I could have gone and bought one, but with the COVID, like, and I know I won't be here for the entire year, it seems like a bit of a waste of money, since I don't know how many barrel races I would be get, get to go in. There's literally, well, right now, I think they're having to cancel some because of restrictions, but that's, like, a really simple part of it, I feel, because what else is happening? I thought I was going to be in Alberta right now, so if you don't know anything about that, watch that video. And so I didn't plan what I was going to do here because I didn't, I didn't think I would be here. But, at the end of last season, and this something I've known for months now, is that Dita uh, is going to need injections before she races again, and she, no, she hasn't been seen by a vet yet, but it is something that's pretty obvious. I think even some of you actually said something about that, but don't worry, like, I already knew, and I was taking precautions to make her as comfortable as possible at the time, because... We only had, like, two races left. Well, we only had one race left when I really knew that it was a problem. And then, you know, there was no point then to inject her for, like, one race when injections only last, like, six to nine months, usually. And it can even be less than that. But it can be more. She needs injections before I raise her regardless. But the thing is my rodeo season if the association here starts if if they have rodeos in 2021 which i'm like i f i don't know i don't know what to think i feel like they will have them but it's just so hard to to say right now because of everything and it's just, you just don't know right now. <laughs> you know, nobody knows what's gonna happen. So, um, I'm hoping that they will have, holy, I did not do <laughs> size this very well. I'm hoping that they will have rodeos and then maybe I can get to some, but it, it totally depends on if they're allowed. But my other struggle, is that I will be in Alberta starting March and that's exactly when the rodeo season starts so it's really hard for me to decide what I'm gonna do because now I, I don't know if I will be in Alberta continuing after 
I finish school, I would like to, but currently, like, I just, I really just have to see how everything plays out. Because obviously, like I found out, <laughs> things can change. <laughs> so, I have to really see, like, I just, I just have to see how it goes. Like, I don't know if I'm going to be in Alberta after my course ends at the end of June. So in that instance, there's no point in taking my horse with me. Another thing that's really difficult is that um, when I'm going to school, I'm going to be extremely busy because with the course I'm taking, you're expected to not only breed the mares when they come into, when, when they need to be bred, Whenever that is, whether that's an evening, weekend, whatever. And then also, you have to fold the mares out. And obviously, that can happen at any time too. So, so it's really hard to like make other plans. And even if I did get a truck and trailer to take with me, because like as of right now, I don't actually even have a truck or trailer. I do have plans to get at least a truck, but like right now, it's just, I don't know. <laughs> so that's, you know, hard. But as, apart from that, like, even if I did get a truck and trailer, I, I don't know if I'm going to have the time. So what I'm thinking, what I'm kind of leaning towards with barrel racing in 2020 is if you recall, I talked about it in a Q&A that I made a while ago. So if you have not seen that, watch that. What I'm thinking is I would really like to work on Nintendo and spend some time writing him. So I'm thinking about whether or not it would be worth it to even send him to a trainer for a month at, um, probably in February or even for March while I'm getting settled in in Alberta and then I can start riding him after that when I'm there and then he'll also be you know ready to start being patterned and stuff or whatever the thing about him is that he's a difficult horse, but he is super stakes registered, which means that if I took him to a, well, he would be derby, he, you know, not a lot of horses are registered with super stakes. And so it's kind of an advantage to be able to run for extra money. And since I have a horse that is, I don't, I don't know if I want to just put that to waste so it would be kind of cool since he's already in Alberta to start riding him and seeing what we got this is like the present that I wrapped seeing what we got seeing if he is gonna excel you know what what kind of horse he'd be I mean because I don't even know if if his style would like match well with mine like I just don't know him because of circumstances that I haven't been able to get to know him. So, it's so, it's so tricky. But it would be fun to get his start out there racing a little bit, or even just like exhibitioning, you know? Then, then instead, instead of taking Dita, Dita up there and paying a bunch of money to have her hauled, or, you, you know, know risking like breaking down on such a long drive so this is for my little sister um i could just have that horse because i don't think i'd be able to afford board on two horses especially if i am going to be so busy and would need to do full board it's just like really difficult i don't know there's a lot of things to think about a lot of things to consider but going back to that so i'm going to be in alberta for at least four months if i stay somehow it's like i don't know i would probably have to sell nintendo because i again like i don't think i'd be able to afford board on two horses and then obviously if i do stay i would have to bring it up like i would i would need to that would be a necessity i did that i would probably have to sell nintendo because like i just said yeah 
it, it would be too hard to have two horses, horses but... but. And then, and then I would just have Deed out there doing, doing whatever situation that I would plan out by then, whatever. If I do come back in July, I would really like to bring Nintendo back down with me. I would really like to do that, and then I can continue racing him for the rest of the season. Um, for Dita, I would really like to be able to come back and race her in rodeos for the end of the season just because I know I'm going to be so sad that I didn't get to race in rodeos this year. So if there are rodeos next year and I do come back from Alberta, I would really like to be able to run her in some rodeos. So I'd be like from July to... Uh, like September and um, continue racing Nintendo like locally so but in order to do that with Dita then that means I would have to get somebody to get her in shape eventually like start getting her into shape so that I can rodeo when I come back um, because it wouldn't be fair to her to for me to come back and just expect her to immediately be ready to run in rodeos like after not being ridden for months because she's still like having time off so I don't exactly know when she's going to be getting back into work I have not planned it yet yeah I don't want to get her in shape because I don't want to make her sore her hawks sore so I don't want to be riding her but I don't want to get her hawks done so I don't know when I'm going to be able to raise her so that would probably happen in the late spring, early summer, if I do plan on racing her in some rodeos, if there's no rodeos next year, she's probably going to get the whole year off, which makes me wish that I bred her. It is what it is, like there's nothing I can do about it now, but um, so to outline that a little bit simpler than I just made that, because I think I made that like extremely complicated. Ideally, I leave Dita here when I go to Alberta in the spring of 2021. I send Nintendo to a trainer for all of March. I start riding him in April. I get him going nice on the barrel pattern, bring him back to BC, race both Dita and Nintendo for the end of the summer, middle to end of summer, then take them both back to Alberta in October and live there and pro rodeo that year. But I would have to, I would need to get a truck and trailer and do a lot of work with my horses because Dita, like she just had her teeth done. Nintendo will probably need his teeth done when I like pretty soon. Um, she will need injections. And so those are things that I need to consider. And then, you know, board on horses. I would need to get my businesses like going really well in order to like be able to afford all of that. So yeah, there are a lot of things that would need to happen in order for my plans to go the way that I really would like them to. But that's kind of my vision that I would really like to happen. Will it happen? Anything could happen. Anything is possible. So here's the next gift that I made. And here's this. But for right now, and it's not like I want to be taking a big break from barrel racing, but just because of how things in the world are and how things are with my horses and how everything just kind of is falling together, it's just it's just a break i'm just taking a break so it's it's really sad for me because uh even like this the few barrel races that are going on where i live i see people running and i'm like so sad like oh i mean i could be there with them running but you know you have to do what's best for your horse and sometimes slowing down in the present and taking a you know, regroup 
and think about what you want to do, make your goals, make your plans. You know, sometimes that can really help you in the future. I'm also saving money right now because I'm not using gas to go to road, uh, barrel races and I'm not paying entry fees. Granted, my mare actually, I was thinking about it a little while ago while she was getting her teeth done. I was like thinking about all the races I went to. She made profit on every race I went to except for two. So that's crazy. And yeah, we did go to a little less because of COVID, but we still went to a ton of local races. Like almost every week we went to a race. So, you know, just that like mere, like, um, like that's to me makes me so proud and shows me that my horse does have potential to do really well. And she's probably been sore in the Hawks for a while. And just she, cause I know Dita, has an extremely high pain tolerance. She's literally sliced her fetlock to the bone and not limped on it. So I know if she's sore on something, it's a big deal. So just thinking like she made so much money this year, think about how much faster she can be if she's not hurting. So that's why I'm like, I don't feel bad about giving her a break. I'm happy that she's resting and building herself up to be able to come back stronger if there are rodeos next year to do a few and then hopefully those few rodeos can prepare us god willing like it will need i will need to be making a good income and have a good situation figured out then hopefully those can get her ready and we can pro rodeo in the fall of next year so it's almost a full year away so it's like you know, the possibility is there. It's not like it's totally out of, out of the world impossible. You know, it's, it's, I can see it on the horizon if I really tried, but with Nintendo too, like, uh, even if I start racing him and he's doing good and I decide I want to sell him, that's not a bad thing either because then maybe I can buy a trailer. Maybe that'll bring me somewhere else because but it would be nice to have him as a backup horse, and I, I really do like him. Uh, he has Corona Cartel, Mr. Jess Perry, and I think it's Dash for Perks on his papers, so he's bred to do it. He's, you know, caddy. He's quick. I feel like he would be a really good indoor horse because he's really small and Dita's quite large. So that's kind of where I'm, like, at thinking they would be a good mix together. But anyway, so I'm rambling obviously talking about barrel racing I'm very passionate about it so I can keep going forever but I think that that's probably good for this video I did get two cute presents wrapped for my sister don't worry she's not subscribed to this channel so anyways thank you so much for watching I will see you all tomorrow happy holidays hallelujah everybody say cheese Merry Christmas from me